All right, so we'll look at question three, which is asking us to find the term independent of x in the expansion. So the expansion we're given is uh, x squared minus 1 over x raised to the power 6. So how basically do we handle that? So finding the term independent of x implies we have to find a term which does not have x as a variable. All right. So we already understand the fact to say, if you're going to have a binomial in this form, let's call it a plus x raised to the power n. We understand to say to find any term of that expansion, we can use a formula where you can say n and then r, you have, those are the coefficients, and then you're going to have a to the power n minus r and then of course x to the power r that's what it implies so if they ask you to find let's say the second term since we know that we start counting from zero if i ask you for a second term it implies it will be the term that is having n choose one okay now in this case we don't have a term that we're dealing with so we'll just apply the same formula okay now what is our n in this case our n is the power six so we'll say what we're dealing with is 6, choose what we don't know. And then we'll say our a is x squared, which would be raised to the difference between the power, the highest power, which is 6 minus r, which we don't know. And then x, in this case, is negative 1 over x raised to the power r, since we don't know what r is in this case. Okay? So I can remove this part and then show that this is basically what we're interested in. So let's try to find the power. Well, let's try to simplify this. So here what we know is 2 is going to multiply with whatever is outside there. So that would be 2 multiplied by 6 minus r. So for basically for us to have no x, it implies the power of the x on top and the one down should be equivalent. And of course we understand that if we were to distribute the r there, x would become the power r and 1 the power r. But 1, even if we raise it to the power r, nothing will change. So it just makes the power r. So the power of x, which is r, should be equal to the power of x on top, which is 2 multiplied by 6 minus r. So I'll just equate the 2. Okay, now we're going to have 2 times 6 is 12, minus 2r is equal to r, we have 12, and then r plus 2r, which gives us 12, 3r, and then our r becomes a 4. So our r is 4. Okay, what term is that? Since we start from 0, that is like the fifth term. Okay, so these are the possible solutions. <clears throat> can we prove this? Well, we can. That is x squared. Now we found our r to be 4. So it implies we put a 4 there. It means even there, there it's going to be 6 minus 4. And then we have got negative 1 over x. This is now also raised to the power 4. Is it? Is it the power 4? Yes, r is equal to 4, so that means 6 minus 4. Okay, let's go. So the next step, we're going to have 6, 4. And then 6 minus 4 is 2, 2 times 2. That gives us 6 to the power 4. And then we've got negative 1, x to the power 4. If, it's, if we were to distribute the power, negative 1 times is the positive power to an even power gives us a positive 1. And then over x to the power 4. So you can clearly see that these are going to divide. And hence... This clearly proves that to say this term is going to be independent of x. Okay, so apply the same concept to answer this one. Alright, so I'll just go direct the point since we already know what to talk to, to do here. So we we'll use our formula n. Our n in this case is uh, 8. So 8 r and then we've got 3x, which should be raised to the power 8 minus r. And then we also have negative 2 over x, which should be raised to the power r. 
Okay, we know where we formula where this is coming from, right? I've already indicated to say n r if you have a it will be n and then the other one will be you just fit the power r and that's exactly what we've just done. Of course this is in a case where you have a plus b raised to the power n. This is how you find the the term in the binomial expansion. So feel free to pause the video and just try this one out. So of course we're interested in the power of x. So that's going to be the power of x. So that would be x is to the power 8 minus r. And then for this part, that would just be x to the power r. So if we distribute, we, we equate the powers now. 8 r being equal to r. 8 is equal to 2 r. And then our r also becomes 4 in this case. So equal the r is equal to 4. Okay, you can prove if you want. Same question is repeated. So you will have 8, choose r, and then we have 2x in the brackets, raised to the power 8 minus r, and then negative 3 over x to the power 3, raised to the power r. Mm -hmm. Feel free to pause the video and try this one out. So for this part, x will be raised to the power 8 minus r. The other part, it will be this 3 times that r. So that will be x to the power 3r. So that's going to be 8 minus r is equal to 8r. And then 8 is equal to 3r plus r there. And then that gives us 8 is equal to 4r. And then r becomes a 2. So therefore r is equal to 4 which we can call the fifth term simple and straight no actually r is equal to 2 which can be, can be called now the third term okay so this is basically very simple and straightforward right just understand that when they say the term independent of x it implies a term that doesn't have x variable in the expansion and of course that occurs when you've got a variable on top and on bottom and so at the point where their powers are going to be equal they will divide